We're all just fruit pieces. <laughs> fruit pieces floating in the jello blob. <laughs> 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 It's abstract piece, man. People been doing that for years. Just been. Five hundred bucks. <laughs> Is that animal birds? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's, that's hilarious. This is waiting to dry, everybody. <laughs> I'm Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. Yeah, he did this uh, video recently where he uh, followed a Bob Ross tutorial. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's from that. That's hilarious. Uh, Hannibal Burris. He has a Hormel chili joke that's like a perfect joke. Really? <laughs> I have to look yeah, that up. It's about, um, yeah, I don't know, it's about uh, racism and... <laughs> How for a second there he lived in a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the uh, reviews for Hormel Chili, like yeah. racist somehow. Oh no, it's or something. It? He's he goes to the store and there's like discounts, so he gets all this Hormel Chili. Okay. And his girlfriend's white, and he's in line, uh -huh. and um, the guy turns around and, like looks at him judgmentally, <laughs> yeah. and he's like. He's like he says something like oh, duh, like why is he looking at me like he can go get his own Hormel chili like uh, he's like t thinking that the guy's like judging him for getting so much Hormel chili and hogging all the Hormel chili he's like <laughs> and then he realizes the guy's actually judging him because he has a white girlfriend oh <laughs> and he's like for for a second there I lived in a world where, <laughs> where racism didn't exist <laughs> yeah. and the man was just judging me up based on like the amount of Hormel chili I, uh, I was buying <laughs> nice. uh -huh. that's but, I mean he that's obviously a very style joke <laughs> yeah he does it so well mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's a perfect joke uh, but yeah how you been? I've been good. Uh, lots of things developing in, in my world, so nice. that's good. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So um, the big news is that uh, I got um, I signed on to do some um, online courses for Sentient Academy, so nice. that's a big one. <laughs> Professor Sergio. Exactly. <laughs> you shall address the mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From this day forth, <laughs> yeah. I declare my name to be. <laughs> um, or doctor, call yourself like uh, like uh, Bill Cosby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. From this day on, you will refer to him as Sergio, Professor Sergio Lopez. <laughs> Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, I'll be doing some uh, gouache courses for for all the kids. That's <laughs> awesome. There. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that, they um, hit me up probably a couple of weeks ago um, asking if I was interested in that. And mm -hmm. what I appreciate about them is that they move pretty fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like uh, uh, if we're both on board, why not? like move it forward so i was pretty happy about that yeah so what is it is it like uh you have to film an online course or is it yeah. like uh that's cool nice. yeah yeah it's yeah pretty similar to what i've been doing on my own mm -hmm. the nice thing about it is that i'll actually have help with it right <laughs> so yeah. yeah um already been talking about like how to set it up and stuff and learning a few things already from uh, on the production side that will help with anything I do. So for sure. it's already pretty cool that way. That's awesome. Yeah. So no timeline for that yet. I guess it's as soon as I can um, develop it, but they're definitely like looking at the market and seeing like, Oh, it's like a lot of people are asking us when we're doing gouache courses and mm -hmm. they haven't, um, I'd be, I guess the first gouache instructor they would have. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so are you going to continue doing like uh, producing your class? Yeah, um, since they already they already covered as far as oil painting goes, so mm -hmm. there's no like stepping on toes there. Yeah, so nice. 
so yeah I'll, I'll be um continuing to develop my own thing um which also is doing um pretty well too been getting more beta testers for that too so nice that's been cool nice uh, and that's what's that class call <laughs> that one's uh paint the landscape in oils in one hour <laughs> nice um, and uh, yeah, yeah. not so, like that two-hour course that those <laughs> losers are pedaling down right. the street. Yeah, <laughs> gotta be on top of of the curb. Here. Fuck yeah! <laughs> but yeah, so I've been doing, I've been um, continuing to um, develop that with the help of some really good feedback I've been getting from uh, my beta tester David. Shout out, he's a listener. <laughs> uh he uh yeah helped me out a lot with like just those little things where uh it's kind of like critiquing a painting like just those little things you you know you probably need to do but like don't like see unless somebody else sees them for you mm. um but yeah so that's been the main thing um oh yeah uh, then the the courses that i did for the that online workshop went pretty well too nice so yeah that that was cool um, it was, uh, just basically like zoom courses that, um, I guess everybody structures them differently, but it was mainly me demoing and, and having people watch and, and ask questions. But the main thing I noticed was that people, maybe it's just like a zoom thing or maybe it's, it, um, students in general, when they're watching a, a course, they, they're just happy to, to just watch it for the most part. There's mm-hmm. not a lot of interacting with with the teacher in that way Mm. so it's a little weird like it's cool because that means i don't have to like talk to people as much and you know me (laughs) but uh uh it's also like oh is this actually like resonating with the people watching like if you don't get feedback from it it's hard to tell right so yeah um it was cool like it was like pretty simple and easy to do Sure. because for that reason but at the same time you're like i don't know could this be a better way of doing it at the same time so as far as like teaching if you had like a things aligned the way you would hope mm-hmm. what would your end result be? like what would your end goal be um i think somewhere in between the two approaches where um you get to like have the people go through and learn it on their own pace and Mm -hmm. then come together in some sort of classroom setting um, to practice and have the teacher kind of like point out. uh, No, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean like how the classes run. I mean, how, like if you, like if you were to like succeed, if you were like, I succeeded at my goal of becoming whatever, I don't know. Do you, do you think that, I don't know if you even have that in your mind um i'm not sure what you mean like as far as like 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 what's the end game of being a teacher no no like if i if i reached do do you have like a goal of like where you want i mean like for instance i have like milestones or goals and obviously if i reach a goal i don't just end there but Mm -hmm. but there's like a there's a art a target to aim for so like I'm just curious, like, um, if you, I don't, I mean, I think we might've talked about this before, how you kind of don't set goals or something like that. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So maybe it is the, the uh, wrong, the wrong question, but uh, I don't know. I, I, at least, um, I'm just curious if like, because it seems like, you know, you're obviously, uh, uh, going towards a P teaching route as far as like a part of your career right Mm -hmm. uh and i i just don't know if you if uh there's um there's like an idea of if you ended up where you were like this is what i wanted Hmm. if there's a a, uh, an idea of what that even means um kind of like it's it's hard to say right now because it is such a new thing for me that Mm -hmm. like when I first started thinking about teaching, it was kind of more being uh, thought of it more as a supplement to what I've been doing as a, um, as a just like studio painter mainly. And uh, now with this whole uh, new sentient Academy thing, I started to think about it a little bit differently. Like, like you could really nerd out about like all the art teaching stuff too. 
Right. And that's kind of fun to think about right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could be like the, I think my goal um, before all this came my way was just like, okay, I'll, I'll put a course out so that um, it kind of just makes money as I do my other th things that I'm really like trying to do more, more gallery paintings and stuff. Right. And so I'm not so worried about um, developing um, all these other different um, avenues that might not make as much money. So in that way, um, that would be kind of the goal of having it be just like a, a income stream. Right. But now I'm thinking about it more like, oh, okay, I can like really get into this and really like learn to be a, a really good teacher if I, I want to. And, mm -hmm. and like, there's, I, I'm noticing more like the enjoyment and fulfillment going in that route too. Right. So yeah. Um, right now it's still probably more on the side of being like, okay, this is just a, a an extra income stream my way. But I mean, who knows? I mean, even if it's an extra income stream, I feel like at least for most artists, it's hard to not try to do your best right. at something. It's kind of a, a good and a bad thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I think, I think, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's like hard to obsess about a painting and have, the, I think that's like a personality trait. Right. So then when you go into these different worlds, you end up, you know, having to like obsess about things. Right. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, like I've, uh, <clears throat> my previous job, I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't hesitate to say how much I hated working there, but <laughs> right. a large part of it was just because there was a there was um, a, a very clear cut line of how much you needed to learn, mm -hmm. oh. and then um, and then after that, it's kind of like almost like mastering mm -hmm. that little bit and then you're like all right i think i'm good <laughs> yeah and then boredom creeps in and you're like i fucking hate this because as artists it's like that's what mm -hmm. art, that's why art's so great because it's like right at the end of the day i i'm gonna continue to learn mm -hmm. uh throughout my whole life doing right. this thing yeah um, so there was a ceiling on what yeah, yeah how far you can get on there yeah. yeah and i don't know if teaching i don't know anything about teaching but mm -hmm. Um, it seems like there's potential to like go into many different avenues of teaching and, you know, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. Yeah. I think there is though. Like, uh, it's almost, uh, kind of, um, thinking about what's the best way to impart your knowledge onto somebody else. And right. there's like a million different ways to go with that. And like, even just like refining that skill of, of, um, uh, how, how can I make my concepts so clear that anyone can pick them up right. and improve from them? So yeah, like, yeah. yeah, in that way, uh, that's can be a really difficult thing to master and figure out. Yeah. yeah so maybe, yeah. And, and that's kind of the, the cool part about thinking about it because there are so many things like you don't even realize, you know, until you, start to actually like have to explain them mm -hmm. it's like oh okay this this way would actually make better sense to explain it and then yeah it's right. like you i'm starting to um watch like art videos again for that purpose of mm -hmm. seeing like oh how are they explaining this concept right like i've been um thinking about like color temperature lately and watching mm -hmm. all these different videos on that on youtube and figuring out i just did one on tiktok uh, did you <laughs> it's a it's a minute long so i nail it you know I, mean? <laughs> I should be taking notes man. <laughs> go to yeah go to joshua Lawyer, sensei joshua lawyer.com <laughs> put us all out of business <laughs> yeah yeah learn how to oil paint do oil painting in a minute <laughs> one minute yeah it's exactly. just like first you time lapse it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but yeah 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 that's a uh i mean it we've had this conversation about painting in general which is uh there's like 
uh, and we would call it's when we define style and how you you determine like kind of like um the pathway to take to complete a painting and there's some things you're willing to ri uh, you risk or mm -hmm. you take more time on because th in your opinion the outcome is greater so it's worth that it's mm -hmm. worth that time and then there's other thing where you want to be um you know uh, i don't know uh, conservative with your moves or something like that i don't know the wording but mm. you know you you do you want to there's a quicker the, the you take the quickest path for mm. things that don't mean that much and, right yeah yeah so mm -hmm. so it sounds like that's what you're kind of doing you're almost like building your style of teaching to yeah kind of figure out how to uh convey something either in the quickest pathway or i'm assuming if it needs more emphasis to take a little bit longer on certain things right yeah yeah um, uh for yeah for the most part uh it's been like a, an overview type of of um approach to it and then just going into the the parts that like okay people are s struggling with this like for example like the the whole like warm cool color thing is something that i've noticed that a lot of people just don't like it doesn't like compute to a lot of people so mm -hmm. that's why i was curious like okay how how are other people trying to explain this and it's right. like everybody's got their own little like way of approaching in some like like you start to like think like oh, okay he he knows what he's talking about or he doesn't like he doesn't know what how to explain this very mm -hmm. well at all either so right <laughs> so you just like start to find like okay who's who's uh teaching the best or at least like as far as you can tell right yeah i mean words are not necessarily an artist's best friend <laughs> right uh, so yeah and a lot of people can be very talented at painting and have no clue of how to uh lay that down especially for like uh someone who might not necessarily comprehend uh it's it's hard to know what people know or don't know do you know what i mean yeah so you might explain something in a way that to you makes perfect sense but you know to someone else it was just a bunch of gibberish <laughs> right yeah um, <laughs> you know and so yeah i mean yeah that's that's super interesting mm -hmm. uh, i would give you this one tip when teaching when you go into the classroom run your nails across the, the chalkboard <laughs> yeah and that gets everyone's attention and then you don't say anything you just start writing your name on the board yeah. in a very fast way <laughs> uh, make sure yeah everybody stops what they're doing and looks up yeah. at the teacher with their their jaw slack exactly it's how you gain the respect <laughs> off the bat yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool yeah nice what's well, exciting good for you man congrats yeah thanks um, <laughs> so yeah other than that um there's a potentially large commission coming my way but um there's still um in the figuring out uh if it's actually gonna happen or not so nice <laughs> i'll That's wait cool. on on uh talking more about that yeah but uh, it's this, cool that what's that is it a potential like uh long long project yeah yeah that's cool yeah could probably take months so nice so yeah pretty good amount of <clears throat> of money if it goes through so, so i'm awesome. happy about that yeah would it be in your landscape or figurative or um a little both nice yeah <laughs> well, that's exciting yeah oh yeah get that money <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> uh i have way too many buttons on this thing <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't. That should be the Pink Floyd version instead. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, making moves, Sergio. Mm -hmm. Things far, uh, finally falling into place. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't know. I don't know if I'll, I. I don't know. Maybe it's the whole 2020 year or something, but I feel like a lot of people have kind of, um, 
I don't know if it's like a snapped out of it thing. I don't think so. I think it, it's almost like everyone's like uh, realizing that uh, that you should start making decisions for yourself. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. I think like, so. You should start figuring out your shit in a weird way. Like, um, I don't know. It's like we were. St- uh, well, it's like the whole gallery shift thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe it's a ton of things all combined and mm-hmm. this is kind of the breaking point, mm-hmm. but it's, it's super interesting seeing, I feel like I've, I mean, I talked to a lot of artists, um, you know, at least back and forth online and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to see what people are, wor- or hear what people are working on and see like the successes they're having in certain areas. And, you know, and, and a lot of it is a lot of it comes down to them. Uh, just like not waiting for shit to happen and just taking, you know, the steps to figure out how to make it happen I mean, obviously there's luck involved and, th- and I'm not saying people shouldn't be able like people help each other and stuff, but, mm-hmm. um, but it's cool to hear people, um, make moves for themselves and kind of set themselves up well. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see, uh, what people do. I was, I mean, me and MJ were having this conversation i don't know where the fuck we were oh we had to go pick up art from minna oh okay <clears throat> and uh i was telling her that like i mean we i brought up or it, it ended up coming up in the conversation that like whole meme rant i had yeah <laughs> um but uh i forgot why it came up but it was just about like the the it, it, it's just my frustration sometimes with how art self-deprecate so much and how there's a lack of like awareness of how that isn't a good thing Hmm. uh i think it's it's like a it's like a weird like uh hipster cool thing do you know what i mean i think so uh there's this like lame uh quote that always comes up on tiktok uh and it's from I forget the fucking movie. It's the movie with Samuel Jackson where he's the basketball coach. Oh, um, okay. And um, and uh, he he. It's like the the Latin kid in the movie. Have you you know what movie I'm talking about? Coach Carter is that what it's called? Is it Coach Carter? I think maybe it, not, but I don't know. It sounds I, I know what movie you're talking about, but yeah, I can't remember that. But uh, I just remember the quote, and it's something to go. It's something about like how human beings are more afraid of um, the heights they can reach than actually failing. Like they, mm. uh, hmm. and there's there even though the quote's a bit over the top and might seem a bit like relax buddy uh <laughs> yeah. but there is some like truth to that there's some truth to like uh to like um like like i think there's a ton of great artists that if you ask them if they were great they would say oh no i'm horrible right <laughs> you know what i mean and you're like no you're good like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're kind of one of the great artists right now living sure but they'd be like oh i'm horrible and you're like <laughs> Like, uh, and I meant, I think I've mentioned this before, how like every rapper in the world (laughs) says that they're the dopest rapper alive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just happens to be an extremely successful music genre. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? And even like, if I had to argue as far as like modern art movements, I would argue that, um, like graffiti and street art are probably some of the most successful, um art um genres as mm-hmm. far as like i mean we all see Banksy shred his fucking work right i mean <laughs> yeah um and in that world it is so that there is no lack of people who think they're the dopest person alive mm-hmm. do you know what i mean there's there and and obviously i don't want every fucking artist to be like uh <laughs> i'm fucking awesome or whatever but <laughs> right you don't have to say you suck. Do you know what I mean? And there's, sure. uh, or even like pursue a goal higher than you think is, um, I don't know. It's like the, the fear of seeming cocky or something or, 
mm-hmm. or f- or thinking that you're taking something that you didn't deserve or whatever. Mm-hmm. That uh, I think uh, I think is an issue with the art world in general. And that's uh, even when that meme came out, that was like my huge frustration. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's still fr- I, I don't even remember why. I was frustrated on the ride there. Or maybe I was, I think I was having a conversation with someone mm. on Instagram and they were like doing really well. And I was like, that's so like, it made me so happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it was like, but the way they went about it was a very unconventional way. Mm. Um, but I don't know. Uh, uh, I've just been, th- I just keep thinking about like how, um, if like, if you, I mean, and I think that maybe why I asked you, like if you, if this whole teaching thing works out, what's the best case scenario? Like, because I think there's something like, um, there's something about setting a goal mm-hmm. at like a high level that makes the pathway clearer. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. So yeah. if I'm just like going through life, um, accepting the the situation as it plays out that's fine do whatever mm-hmm. the fuck you want but there is something about saying like okay if i want to you know like there's people who want to become museum artists right right and they have a very clear pathway to get there mm-hmm. because there are steps set up mm-hmm. so that you go to the right schools you do the right things right and yeah you get to where you hopefully want to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I get what you're saying there. Like, like if that person who's set up to be a museum or setting themselves up to be a museum artist, right. if they're like, well, that's stupid. Why would I ever be able to get into a museum? Like these, right. like looking at like these artists have been like hundreds of years ago. Like that's who's supposed to be in museum, not mm-hmm. me. Like, I, like if you f- felt that way, that'd be very much like a shooting yourself in the foot right. mentality for it. Yeah, and and let's say, let's say if I wanted to, if I wanted to sell a painting for a hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if I just set that goal, if I go like, okay, I want to sell a painting for a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars that allows me to have a clearer pathway to how to get there. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? If I go yeah. like, okay, I want to sell a hundred painting for a hundred thousand dollars. Well, obviously not everyone can buy a hundred thousand dollar painting. Mm-hmm. So I need to figure out how to, uh, make my way get there. Mm-hmm. And then I can start strategizing my life mm-hmm. to meet this goal. Right. You know? And, um, yeah, and, and I think uh, th- the way you do that is, like, you believe that, like, you have the ability to do so. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where most artists lack from the get-go. It's like this, uh, they all think, we all are, like, too worried about seeming overly confident in our skill set or something. Mm-hmm. So then we all self-deprecate, and mm-hmm. then... um the moment someone shows any confidence, we look at it as, as if it's a negative. Hmm. Um, and it's weird to me because I mean, I enjoy, first of all, I love competition mm-hmm. and I never think of if someone thinks they're dope as shit, I don't think of that as a negative unless I don't. And, and I, I only judge the work and I'm like, well, your work isn't dope. Like, <laughs> right. It sucks. But, um, but there's a, I mean, in my mind, um, there is a, there is like a, 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 a benefit to competition. I mean, I always am like in my head, when I see someone do something fucking awesome, I don't get like angry at them. I just, am like, damn, that's fucking good. I need to get back to work. Mm. And there's a, there's, that's my competitive nature. Right. Uh, pushing me to get better, Mm -hmm. which in my mind is not bad at all. It's not a negative at all. No. Uh, and, and I think it helps everyone get better. And, and at some point I feel like, uh, we have to, 
you know, be able as like a community to build the culture where we're not fucking so, uh, so like, uh, depressed about success or something. I don't know. Or it's like, uh, I mean, I always fucking compare it to the comedy scene, but mm-hmm. th- if you pay attention to like how comedians, um, from like 10 years ago talked about comedians Mm -hmm. they were so fucking self-deprecating they just (laughs) and they hated anyone that would win Mm -hmm. um and that is like 100 percent changed Mm -hmm. like they're all like succeeding (laughs) and all they do is big up their fucking their skill set and their uh, fellow comedians and stuff right uh there is a yeah there's a huge separation from like and even like the new york scene which holds on to that a bit like Mm -hmm. the the people that are succeeding hugely in that all seem to be like people that are really pushing themselves to be great right yeah even if they don't want to admit it like Mm -hmm. uh, mark norman (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah uh but yeah Oh, yeah. uh, he's like he's always like oh, I suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I I think I mean if anything I feel like that's a that's not the uh, you know that's not why anyone likes him <laughs> right because he's self right because he's hilarious right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that rant led. But. <laughs> yeah, I I guess in that context, um, I don't know what what like the. The end game, I guess, would be like, I don't have like a, um, I mean, I guess it'd be, uh, one goal would be like, okay, can I make a hundred thousand dollars just from teaching? Right. <laughs> like that's a decent enough goal to, to strive for. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a very easy, easily graspable goal. Yeah. That was a horrible sign, but you get my, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't like, really think it is either. And I think like uh having that as like oh as a goal of like how can i make a hundred thousand dollars as a teacher Mm -hmm. it it then becomes a uh an easy thing to start figuring out because you already set your goal Mm -hmm. now let's figure out how to get there Mm -hmm. you know and then let's see if i can communicate with the right people to see what steps i need to take to like uh reach that goal yeah and in a lot of ways it's more clear cut than selling paintings because it's like uh, you can really set your price per unit like and it's it makes more sense to the average person 100 percent. yeah so um in that way it's just like do the math first and then figure it out from there and it's easy to explain like the value you give to someone when you're teaching them because you're giving them your knowledge Mm -hmm. it's harder to explain why someone should own a painting yeah it's one of the hardest questions (laughs) i have to answer to be honest yeah because um i don't understand it to be honest (laughs) yeah you know right i i own a lot of artwork and i love it Mm mm-hmm but I don't understand why other people would want it. I don't, I, don't, I just don't get it. It's <laughs> yeah. such a weird uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I understand that. But I just have to like get out of my head when it comes to that question. Cause there's a whole rabbit hole of, of brain fuckery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess for me, like the, to answer that is more about like just listening to what other people say other people tell me about like why they want to own my art or why they what it meant to them to like have the piece of art yeah and just kind of i think it's just us overthinking it too (laughs) i mean i own a shitload of art and i love it (laughs) i mean but you never had to like explain why you love each piece though no (laughs) and i think us as artists we're like why do people do this but it's like (laughs) i don't we do the same shit like (laughs) right i don't know why do people collect uh hot wheels i don't fucking know <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> let's stop worrying about the why mm-hmm. uh but yeah i don't know i mean i don't even necessarily need you to answer the question of your end goal mm-hmm. i just i think the point i'm trying to make is like uh it's good it's like a good habit for artists mm-hmm. and i think for like our culture uh as artists mm-hmm. as a you know the art 
world, right. at least in our circle, to start thinking about um, uh, how to kind of like push things forward, you know, how yeah. to, and, and I think, um, like thinking like of how, like, I remember like the, we had the David Cho question for so long mm -hmm. and literally every artist has never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and I think the problem is, is maybe the Dave Cho question should be like, do you think, like, how would you want to, like, the better question is like, how, like, what would success look like to you? Like, mm -hmm. like if you were like your dream scenario as an artist, like what, like what would that be? Mm -hmm. And maybe the problem is we're all like, I don't know, in our, a, a really good studio. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe the better question is how do you get to a really good fucking studio? Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, cause if that's all we really want at the end of the day, it's like, well, obviously a really nice studio costs money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how do you get that money to get there mm -hmm. uh, and paint your, your pictures? Right. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm like, for instance, I, um, El Coro, right? Mm -hmm. I'm always like looking at his stories and yeah. jealous of what he has. Uh -huh. It's like, how do you get there? Right. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like uh, yeah, maybe the yeah, that's that's the question to ask is how how to get there rather than I don't know. I mean, I, for, I, first you probably have to define it, I guess. Right. Yeah. And then figure out how. Uh, but yeah, I think. Uh, that's all. I don't know. It's yeah. Like, I remember him back in the day, like just always known for working harder than everyone else, mm. basically. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, like just be falling into the right spot. Cause he, I'm pretty sure he made a lot of money doing the concept art mm -hmm. work, but yeah, like always just, um, even after doing, ev after working long days, coming home and painting a lot. And right. so, yeah, just, just really outworking everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's definitely a part of it. Like that whole like conversation around grit and just mm -hmm. being able to just figure out how to motivate yourself to pretty much outwork everyone, at mm -hmm. least in the beginning. I think mm -hmm. there is a snowball effect. Um, once things kind of happen mm -hmm. and you can kind of slow down a bit, but, I think in the, I think for sure hard work can push you along in your journey uh, more than probably anything else. Mm -hmm. But once again, I think um, having that like that direction of where to where to push is also like a very important question to ask and figure out answers to. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean. I feel like every time I talk about self-deprecation, uh, fucking, uh, like I always feel like I'm going to get like a wave of, uh, of comments. About <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'm so fucking, see, I don't even know why I care. Cause I'm so bad at remembering shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's like, oh, fuck. Uh, there's so many times people tell me stuff I said on this podcast. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even remember that. Oh, I know. And I think it'll be like this episode. Someone <laughs> will tell me to, like when it drops. And I'm like, I said that. All right. I don't know. <laughs> fuck it. Yes, yeah. I said that. All right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember somebody. Because, you know, sometimes they'll... Um, uh, post stories of people like drawing while listening to the podcast and uh -huh. you'll hear like your voice saying something out of context. I'm like, what the hell was they even talking about? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. Uh, I know. And the problem is, is like, at least I think my issue is that I have all these like ideas I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And so when we're on the podcast, I'm just throwing them out there. Mm hmm. But like the concept itself is like in my head, just like I don't know, in a in a, like a jello blob form, sure, uh -huh. with little fruit pieces, <laughs> yeah, <all. laughs> uh, yeah. But um, but the like trying to like describe it on the show is like 
I don't know. It's like mm-hmm. uh, sometimes they'll, t- you know, they'll hyper focus on me talking about the little fruit pieces. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. When I'm more focused on the jello blob itself <laughs> as a whole. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, and that's called poetry. <laughs> right. <laughs> if your 15 year old son could see you now. <laughs> Uh, someone write that down <laughs> jello blob <laughs> right. we're all just jello blob jello blob we're all just fruit pieces fruit pieces floating in the jello blob <laughs> <laughs> uh, kit kat uh, right. um, all right yeah <laughs> I don't know. Did I ramble enough about that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, How do you feel uh, being done with your Stone Sparrow Gallery show? I uh, feel pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, happy with the work? Yeah, I'm really happy with the work. I did 14 pieces, and I was exhausted by the end. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, as far as, like, uh, the body of work I created, it, it's probably the one i'm the most proud of to date mm-hmm. um yeah and uh hopefully i can keep this momentum and the next body of work i'll be even happier but but yeah th- for this body i mean i'm just tackling that like idea that i had about objects in motion mm-hmm. was uh i felt like i I like uh learned a lot from it hmm. and um did some interesting things that I was really excited about um in the paintings to uh, uh around that that uh narrative rule or whatever hmm <clears throat> that what's something you felt felt <clears throat> felt like you learned um just i don't know l- little like um just like little things where it felt sarcastic to me mm-hmm. uh, was like interesting, like thinking of like, oh, this feels like based on objects in motion and then the name of the painting, then understanding how I could try to like use those two titles and then the imagery to to kind of say something sarcastically or something comedically or um, how to really push emphasis on something Hmm. um uh specifically um you know with this idea of objects in motion and trying to figure out how to tell a story and how to really pinpoint an object to emphasize that story Mm -hmm. seemed to me like a really great challenge in um uh defining the world around this figure in a way that, um, that kind of, uh, when like, uh, when you hone in on what I'm trying to say, you can really, uh, get a lot from a very, like a, like a, like something very small, like, uh, I mean, like, um, for instance, I have the painting uh, Trudge, mm-hmm. you know, where it's about uh, humans urge to keep moving on or keep moving forward to just tr- to keep walking is the mm-hmm. concept. Mm-hmm. And that was based around, I don't know, there was something I was listening to where they asked the question, it might have been Sam Harris's podcast, but about the question of why people, when they're suffering so hard from like a terminal illness Mm -hmm. and they're in a hospital bed. Like there is this weird things thing you do to keep moving forward, Mm -hmm. to keep trying to survive, even though there's no, you can't have a child, you know, like Mm -hmm. you can't, all you have left is the ability to observe suffering in a weird way. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm. Yeah. Uh, And then, so that's, I don't remember how long ago I heard that, that idea, but it really made me think about human beings and the, although like it might be really uh, horrible, but there are these moments where human beings 
you know, go through these really difficult times and not all the, I mean, obviously a terminal illness ends in where it ends. And I feel like we all probably all end there anyway. I mean, we all end there anyway, so Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. But, um, but there's moments where a person will push through these, these times and end up somewhere really great. And although I don't think struggle is necessarily, um, uh, you know, the reason for, for anything to be highlighted, I think there is something about that that we just appreciate as humans. And I think it's it's the fact that we all kind of have, however, in whatever scale, a version of that, you know, mm-hmm. a version of um, the, the, the urge to just keep moving forward. Right. Um, and so... In this painting, the object in motion throughout the whole thing, although it's called Trudge and it's about a lady moving, mm-hmm. the object in motion that I really want to pinpoint on is is the leaking out of the bag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 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 so, so the lady's carrying a, a bag and it's leaking. The, and it's just, all it is is a line mm-hmm. that goes down from the bag and then lands on the floor and moves down the road uh, just implying that the bag is leaking and and it's just about this kind of burden this person might be holding at this time and the idea is that um the bag is getting lighter so it's like this story of optimism Mm -hmm. but it's based around such a at least for me such like a dark and negative subject matter Mm -hmm. but it's it trying to figure out how to convey you know um this feeling while while having the object in motion be tell you that the story is a story of like optimism or hope or whatever Mm -hmm. so it's trying to figure out how to tackle an idea and a conclusion to a story or narrative although i mean i know this word is taboo in the art world but to me, it's like trying to figure out these things in these interesting ways that, that, you know, is, is the, the, the problem I'm trying to solve in general when it comes to a painting, which is how to tackle narrative mm-hmm. in a way that I think is meaningful and has depth to it that, um, that, um, we, we as artists or not, we as artists, but a lot of artists seem to want to stray away from, because it has this, um, this like, um, I don't know, tackiness or, Mm -hmm. or whatever attached to it. Um, but to me, it's, it's where I find the most excitement in my work right now. Mm. Um, and probably for the rest of my work. Um, Yeah. Um, the whole narrative thing, it seems like, uh, I've noticed, more lately that people who come from a different background like not a fine art background Mm -hmm. seem to be way more comfortable with with storytelling um like like they're not worried about it being like cheesy or whatever right (laughs) um like people from like the entertainment uh like doing art for for games and movies and stuff Mm -hmm. a lot of their work is just like they just i feel like they probably just think that way Mm -hmm. so storytelling is almost always built into their their work yeah and i'm curious as to how much like art school sets these ideas in people's heads early on Mm. like that's one of the things i'm really like uh, if i I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people who went into fine art might have been a bit narrative um, like, uh, had, had a bit of like a narrative touch in their work mm-hmm. pre art school. Yeah. And then, um, because of this, like, uh, tackiness or whatever, or like judgmental environment mm-hmm. where you have this, like y- these like young artsy hipster kids, you know, who are <laughs> sure. ready to like say other shit is bullshit. And yeah. then th- that creates this weird, um, uh, mentality that it's hard to break when you leave art school Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah, I mean, I I noticed that too, like in the fine art world. And I, I I feel like the connection there being 
um, being that they, a lot of the people that are like, uh, went to college feel this way mm. went to, to the art school, which is hilarious because then if you probably ask them, uh, their opinion, art, art school law and probably talk shit about it. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, but, but you, you might, you might gain what I would consider a bad habit. Mm. Um, from it, not saying that you have to have work being narrative, but the idea that being narrative is a negative, uh, right. Mm-hmm. To me is, uh, a, a, a dumb idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we talked about it before, but it's the same thing. Like ideas can be good or bad and they can be improved on like a skill, like anything else. Yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. any idea or any, anything if done well can be good. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, uh, or listen, maybe not anything, but I would say like uh, 99% of things if done really well can be appreciated and, uh, good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, and storytelling in my opinion is, I mean, it's not even in a conversation if if, if it could be good or not. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is probably that when you're in art school, your ability to tackle narrative is probably really shitty, you know? Uh, and so while you're trying to form these ideas of what good art is and you have only people who tackle narrative really badly, it's probably easy to be like, well, narrative sucks. Um, <laughs> right. You know, to draw to that conclusion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I wonder where that idea is most like battle. Is it in like the abstract art world or, or I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Cause I think some people, uh, like there's a whole like school of art where they're trying to remove all meaning from everything they right. do. And, uh, I wonder if that's kind of where it started, where people taking that whole idea to the, um, hundredth degree and, yeah. um, there is something th- you just get lost in your own, um, uh, I don't know, your own like headiness. Yeah, maybe. I'm also I'm also playing around with making a painting in the future about um, uh, peer pressure because hmm. I've been recently thinking about how much power peer pressure has. Sure. And I'm like, like I, I'm almost to a point where I'm like, I think it might be the most powerful thing in the world <laughs> in a weird way. Wow. <laughs> um, and um, and yeah. Uh, like to bring this back to what we were saying, there's something about like trendiness, whatever fuck that word means. Right. Of mm-hmm. like, Oh, like it's trendy to like remove all meaning from artwork. Mm-hmm. And somehow this like thing starts becoming like the cool thing or whatever. Right. And there's this weird, like odd, uh, pressure, uh, like however soft it may be mm-hmm. to, uh, go a direction. Um, and kind of being aware of that and because like there's a, like for instance a question i've been asking myself a lot recently is like who the fuck collects like uh art mm-hmm. like and and um and why and uh um and one thing that's really trendy now shout out to kanye is minimalism <laughs> Uh, which means that you don't have shit in your house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, and it's easy to kind of think that that's an attractive thing, you know, like the idea that like, uh, yeah, we don't need possessions. And so, uh, we should get rid of all these things that like clutter up our head or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all these like ideas that I think sound attractive, but like, uh, I don't know. Aren't at least to me that that interesting or 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 uh, functional, mm-hmm. and so it might be easy for like a Kanye West to be like, my house <laughs> is just a a fucking hospital, <laughs> yeah, um, with a piano in the middle. But as far as like for me, like I want my home to feel like uh, my home. You know what I mean? Like I want to. Like, 
uh, I think the idea of like having like a maximalist place to me is way more interesting yeah. than a minimalist place. Like, um, right. Uh, but, um, I would agree with that. But then these trends have, I mean, I definitely have too much shit and I, <laughs> and I, I mean, obviously you don't want to be a hoarder at the end of the day. Uh, and I usually try to do big purges of my house of shit I don't need, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's also like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we went to Bagger's house and oh yeah, <laughs> it, it was awesome to see all his stuff. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. He's like a collector yeah, type of person. A- like everything is very neat and like well placed and everything like that but yeah. he's got a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah yeah and i think i i think that's what one of the conclusions i've come to is like first of all the people that probably collect art are not minimalist they're <laughs> right. probably on the farther end of like they like shit <laughs> yeah that's and probably, probably a version of bagger which means they're just like a collector mm-hmm. like they like to collect things and there is something about that personality type mm-hmm. you know that just likes to geek out on this on a subculture right yeah totally ours just happens to be ex- on the more expensive end of, <laughs> right yeah of collecting mm-hmm. and everybody's trying to do it too <laughs> what do you mean like i mean every everybody like well not literally but yeah like so many people are trying to be artists and oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to sell their stuff yeah but i mean at the end of the day there really isn't that many uh, who are actually doing it yeah yeah <laughs> Or even at a level that is, um, I would say, collect worthy. Right. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah. I mean, that's just me. Uh, <laughs> talking shit. <laughs> talking that shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely some artists that are good though. I mean, that are like, I, I mean, I wouldn't feel the urge to collect them, but that are good. Yeah. Um, sure. But I don't know. I always wonder what the number is of artists that I think are um, on that level, at least for like the genre, whatever that genre even means, because I honestly don't know where the edge is on that. But mm. um, where, where we kind of would fall under mm. um, in my head, I feel like there's like 4000, <laughs> if that Wow. probably closer to 2000. Hmm. But I'm being nice. <laughs> uh, the only reason I think it's 2,000 is because I think I follow like 2,000 artists. Oh. But I would assume there's like 2,000 artists I'm not aware of. Mm-hmm. And that's the other 2,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, maybe I'm being an <laughs> asshole. But I just haven't found people that I think are... I don't know. <laughs> Uh, hey, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not arguing that. I'm just putting out my stroke. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what my stroke is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah. I mean, for sure, I'm wrong. This is an opinion. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but. But yeah, <laughs> I would assume that. Uh, That's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> I would almost assume that, uh, as far as like a a person that probably collects artwork, um, uh, at like a you know at like a highish rate, I would probably guess that they might even have a smaller number than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? because obviously they're putting their money where their mouth is. Right. So yeah. So even though I'm saying there's a uh, four, uh, let's say four thousand people worth collecting. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if those collectors collect five people, in my opinion, that means they think there's only five people <laughs> worth collecting. Mm. Um, especially if they have enough money to collect whoever. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> They're the asshole. They only collect five people. Yeah. No, it's just, I mean, it is what it is. How many, how many like real collectors are there? That's the other question. That's true too. Yeah. I feel like there are way more or way less collectors than creators. Maybe. I don't know. That, that could also be argued, I guess, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, how, that's, I would say there are way less like 
collectors of multiple, like who people who who consider art collection their hobby. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people collect art in some way. Yeah, like probably, almost everybody. We probably sound like horrible people right now. <laughs> Oh fuck. <laughs> um so um they listen to this and they're just like Your thoughts ain't my thoughts <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did that just say? Your thoughts ain't my thoughts. Your thoughts ain't my thoughts, hell <laughs> yes. Um uh, wait, I was gonna bring up something but I don't know if we were done with that. Uh well, more or less, yeah. <laughs> And this has nothing to do with art. Uh, <laughs> I'm just curious about your opinion on it because uh, uh, so th- I was I was reading this like article about how scientists um, have used um, like the uh, human genetics to modify a monkey's brain okay. in order to make it grow like more uh, rapidly. The brain? Yeah. And hmm. so the the brain's grown like way larger than the average monkey brain. Hmm. And I feel like the obvious uh, reaction to that is like, have you heard of Dr. Sayus? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I don't know why I feel this way and I don't know how horrible it is, but in my head, when I read that, I got really excited and I was like, and I was like, yeah, let's get weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, um, like, uh, in my head, I, I always, I think let's just, as far as like, like knowledge and I don't know, I would call it progress, but maybe I'm I'm wrong about that. Uh, I mean, at least progress in knowing something, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in my head, uh, I like my, my default response is usually, yes, let's do it. Like, uh, (laughs) (laughs) like, like even if it ends, in Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, I think, yeah, let's just see if it gets there. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Your curiosity knows no bounds. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like everything is kind of inevitable in a weird way. You know, like progress is inevitable. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, like, there seems like there are pathways that we don't have control over as mm-hmm. like a based on how humans are made mm-hmm. like um the uh, you know that like when we i think we talked about o pioneer that painting i created mm-hmm. but the urge human beings have to go to the unknown to like seek out um you know th- where no one has gone before like this urge humans have i think is very natural yeah and at some point i think it'll lead to the destructions of human but in my mind i'm like but like where does it go like like does it end up in like a hard drive somewhere like i don't know does ai become the matrix i don't know all i'm saying is let's figure it out hmm. do, do, does ai go to war with mon- giant monkey brains <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> right. All I'm saying is less like, uh, do you ever learn about like the CRISPR technology? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. And then the first thing they brought up was like this idea that they can mutate mosquitoes mm-hmm. so that, um, that they would pretty much go extinct. Mm-hmm. And everyone was like, Ooh, this sounds like a slippery slope. And I was like, less slip on this slope. <laughs> Get that sled out y'all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, let's figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, let's see how weird this world can get. Uh, but I, I read that article. I was like, I got to bring this up on the podcast. Cause <laughs> I feel like my instincts are very different than Sergio's. <laughs> Probably. Um, I mean, yeah, there's part of me that's like, yeah, let's find out what we could do. But then there's a, a big part of me. It's like, I'm scared. <laughs> Here, here's my, here's, here's maybe here's my best argument to this idea okay is like we just had uh or we still have a wild man at the helm of our country (laughs) sure yeah 
And like, let's say if, let's say if like, um, somehow he fig he set up, um, a, a situation that led to the demise of humans, right? Okay. Through like nuclear war. Mm-hmm. Such a fucking boring ending. <laughs> when, we, when we could have monkey brain enemies, giant brain monkeys, and AI robots, and us <laughs> have how we end. To me, I'm like, let's go towards. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's my best argument. Is we had an orangutan at the helm. We had a doctor say us come at us, and I mean, maybe not come at us, but yeah. <laughs> what he showed was like how how easily things could like get flipped upside down. Sure. And so boring. I'm <laughs> such a lame way. <laughs> Where like giant monkey brains and and fucking do you know what I mean? I get what uh, you mean. All I'm saying is we don't want to go out with some <laughs> lame ass nukes, old ass technology. <laughs> I want that brand new shit. Um, uh, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yes, as far as uh, that goes, uh, how close to the the action would you want to be? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. We'll figure it. I don't want. I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, I'd like to see it a little bit at least. <laughs> yeah. Do I want to like live through the war? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, do I want to be like we got there, guys? We got to like <laughs> robot AI and and giant monkey brain. So you really are all about the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, now that, uh, you know, and birds falling from the sky because they can't eat mosquitoes anymore. They're starving <laughs> to death. Although I, I was told that mosquitoes aren't a l- large percentage of what bird feed on. I heard the same thing, too. Like, you, um, I think it was like a radio lab or something I listened mm-hmm. to a long time ago where they were talking about what would happen if if mosquitoes went extinct Mm -hmm. and like the scientists were saying it were like probably not a lot like it wouldn't affect the the um right what do you call it the The, ecosystem yeah that much yeah like enough for it to justify him like uh letting them exist as a as a yeah organism those motherfuckers kill us with no uh regard (laughs) yeah It's the largest killing animal other than a human uh, in the world. And I feel like that means that they're, they've killed more humans than any, any other animals outside of humans, which means they're our biggest enemy. Mm. I'm saying it right now. Yeah. Fuck Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Fuck the Taliban. We're warring with mosquitoes. Come on, that's great. <laughs> yeah. USA! USA! <laughs> And this isn't even a country thing. This is a worldwide thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Say we got to keep our spawn on the throne. <laughs> yeah. And let's get, let's make things a little weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. In the name of progress. Not in the name of lame ass nukes. <laughs> Shit is hella old. <laughs> I want that brand new. <laughs> so um, did it talk about like how smart the monkeys are getting or, or like, is this the thing that's actually like they're, they're actually like testing this. I should have shared the article with you. I can't even remember it. I just (laughs) read it and I was like, hell yes. Cause I'm curious, like, are they just growing the size of the brain and that's actually like, um, translating to intelligence or, Uh, I I don't know if they, it was like a brain outside of a monkey. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's like not real, uh, like there's no, um, conclusive sort of like, findings from uh, yeah. doing this yet okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but we should figure it out <laughs> right um yeah I, yeah yeah i wish i could follow you in your enthusiasm here <laughs> what's, your, what's your issue sergio are you worried that they're gonna paint landscapes you? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's my number one thing yeah. <laughs> they'll beat me to, to course creation yeah <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like these were <laughs> were these super intelligent beings that are like way stronger than us too. I feel like I don't know they'll they'll be after revenge. <laughs> oh, you're afraid <laughs> that they're gonna be smarter 
and more physically dominant than us. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's another good question, though. See, here's a question to that idea is we're so used to being like the great species of the world, of mm-hmm. our world, right? Like, um, and so we kind of are dismissive of other animals. Yeah. Right? We're like, eh, I mean, it's a <laughs> monkey, but fuck off. Right. Uh, but if a, if a, if a, a species greater than us appeared mm-hmm. and they were dismissive of us, mm-hmm. are they right in doing so? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like, do we got to fall back in line and be like, yeah, well, you got a point. Like, <laughs> we were top shit, but uh, <laughs> now you're top shit. And we did do the same thing you're doing. <laughs> so, technically, we get it. Um, yeah. Not cool. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I'd like to keep my arms and my nuts intact. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you assume that they're going to... St- keep that with that intelligence they're not going to be um more polite sergio and less animalistic mm, i guess some may be that's but... a big assumption <laughs> and all i'm saying is we should find out if you're right or not <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, would yeah would this be like real planet of the apes like yeah. would there be the all of us getting our face ripped off <laughs> uh, the, there would be the guy. I can't remember the characters off the top of my head, other than Doctor Zayas. But <laughs> there was the, the other ones. Uh, damn, I can't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> but you know, there were like the different uh, mm-hmm. philosophies the, within the apes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was like the liberals and the conservatives, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> they're no different than us. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want another? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Imagine Facebook once the apes get a hold of it now. <laughs> Just think Social think media. of like one of those giant brain monkeys riding <laughs> on a battlefield on a Boston Dynamic horse. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> New painting series. <laughs> Head up uh <laughs> Chris Leap. <laughs> no, uh what's uh, the Ag- Agnica? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Agnieszka. Agnieszka. Yeah. She's painting Boston Dynamic things right now, isn't she? Oh, is she? I haven't looked at her stuff in a while. Wow, Sergio. (laughs) She was a guest on our podcast. (laughs) Did you treat her? (laughs) 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 Who else have you uh, been ignoring? Uh, That's an off-air conversation. (laughs) Uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I thought for sure that was a Chris Lieb job, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. Or Chris Lieb. He would, he would, he would also do. Collaborate you two. <laughs> <laughs> the melding of styles. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was super interesting and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I want to hear Sergio's take on this cause, uh. Because I don't think it's at all. I don't know if any most people feel the way I do. About <laughs> Probably this not. Uh, and maybe there's like, um, what is it, like a nihilist perspective I have when it comes to all this. Mm-hmm. Where it's like it's all going to end anyways. <laughs> right. Let's yeah. end with a bang. Um, oh, yeah, that reminds me. Have you heard of uh, optimistic nihilism? <laughs> Uh, I feel like I might have. Because it was something that I, it was, I heard that, um, that concept recently. And isn't there like, like a rap huh, lyric that says that? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'll just find the definition real quick. But it, I, I heard it. I was like, I wonder if Josh would, um, fall into yeah, this. Yeah. Fall into sounds this. pretty, sounds pretty close to what to me. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Uh, and even more so now that we've talked about monkey brains. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, let's see if I find it easy. Um, or is it nihilistic optimism? <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. But yeah, I always feel that I always feel like that about whenever I read some weird science shit. I like the whole like CRISPR thing. Yeah. 
or like we could do this and then it be it like got put to like a halt because everyone was freaking out and i was like let's just do it like let's bring giants into the world do you know what i mean let let's create giant humans why not yeah so uh, if i could summarize as best as i could it's basically like you know nihilism meaning like there's no meaning to life Mm-hmm. But the optimism part of it is is more like, okay, since there's no inherent meaning to life, um, I'm excited because that means I get to create my own meaning in life for myself. Sure, I think so. I, I have an idea that's somewhat like that. I think that idea is a little dangerous because then you're like, all right, well then I can go. I enjoy murdering. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> sure, <laughs> um, but. Uh, for the most part, I have uh, some idea. Like, I mean, I think it's kind of like the whole, like, um, there's this uh, wise quote someone wrote, once said, which is, you only live once. Um, that was Drake. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an acronym. So, um, um, but yeah, I think um, for the most part, I, I have this mentality that, like, I, I mean, after we go, we go. So, like. Mm-hmm. Like don't don't fucking like uh, hold back, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's basically what it's saying. It's uh, so th- this one's more or less what I was saying. Uh, optimistic nihilism views the belief that there is no underlying meaning to life from a perspective of hope. So it's not that we're doomed to live in a meaningless universe. It's, it's that we get the chance to experience ourselves in the universe we share. The optimistic nihilist looks at a world lacking meaning and purpose and sees the opportunity to create their own. Uh, Embracing the absurd is one of the things, too. (laughs) I I also don't know if there's a meaning to life or not. I just don't know. Right. That's the, I mean, when it comes to like meaning of life, life, I'm, I'm an agnostic for sure. I have no concept. I would never claim to know Uh uh, what that is. Um, Right. But, but because I don't know. I figure, and I don't think that there's anything after this shit. I'm like, do it up, do it big. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, don't hesitate. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, one of the worst things you can do is just work a job you hate for the rest of your life mm-hmm. and then die. Um, I mean, obviously we all have to survive, mm-hmm. but um, trying to figure out how to do that without, you know, just working a nine to five. I don't know that whole, like that to me is one of the saddest stories lived is like a person, which is funny because it's like, I don't know if there's even meaning or even anything to do. Like if that even matters at all, but like, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, at the least try to enjoy this ride. Right. Like at the bare minimum. (laughs) And if you're not in, if 90% of your life is you hating your job and waking up and sleeping, Mm -hmm. then fuck, man, fuck, (laughs) do something. Um, Right. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like that comes a lot from like the whole, um, what do you call it? I don't know if it's like. Puritan or uh, like even before that, the whole like uh, like Protestant kind of way mm-hmm. of looking at things are you just like work, uh, like your meaning is just, you know, working and then you're rewarded in the afterlife kind of thing. Fuck that noise. Yeah. I'm not making that bet. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Mm-hmm. It seems hor- it seems like the dumbest bet to make. Right. Hopefully I'm right about this thing that <laughs> yeah. no one has any idea if right. it's actually accurate or not. There's no real way to tell if it's true or not, but I'm going to make my fucking whole life bet on that idea. Right. It's crazy to me. Um, yeah, I agree. Fuck the afterlife. I mean, if it's there, it's there. But <laughs> fuck, I mean, I don't, I honestly don't, I don't know. If there was, if if magically we died in, I mean, not magically, but if we died in magically, there was like some after thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assume, and maybe I'm wrong with this assumption, that it's not going to be based on um, if we eat shellfish or not. You know I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. If we get into that place. Uh-huh. Um, sorry. So... Sorry for all you believers out there. And believers. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But um, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not fucking making that bet anytime. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I feel like my my brother listens to this. He's gonna. He's gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> there's also. I feel like. I mean, I don't even know if he's this way, but there, there's also people that like to hedge their bets. You know what I mean? Oh sure, yeah. Like, well, I'll just do it just in case. And I'm like, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would say there's probably a lot of people who fall into that, like yeah. more so than I even realize. Almost all of Catholic people. Are, are <laughs> yeah, <that. laughs> yeah. They're a bunch of let's just hedge this bet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Baptist are the opposite. They're like, God said, if you are lukewarm, I'm gonna spew you out my mouth. <laughs> right. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> like. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, gr- growing up Baptist. That is a verse they love to throw around that. Oh, really? That you have God to. God don't fuck with lukewarm. Mm, I see. Fucks with hot and cold. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're half in, then your ass is getting the boot. Mm, I see. That's their, um, their way of being like, you can't be hedging your bets you Mm. gotta be all in you gotta be crazy like the rest of us (laughs) yeah Hmm. uh yeah that's (laughs) i'm glad yeah i'm glad i get to be lukewarm i mean not even that i am but (laughs) just because i grew up in that Mm. sort of thing yeah (laughs) Yeah, or you could be cold or hot (laughs) yeah um but i'm just lukewarm about most things yeah uh (laughs) Lukewarm, uh, God damn it, I was trying to figure out a Skywalker, <laughs> oh, lukewarm yeah. walker. I don't know. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Can you edit this so I sound cool? <laughs> Luke, uh, yeah, lukewarm Scott. <laughs> I know. <laughs> warm Skyker. Warm walker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You lukewarm walker. <laughs> yeah. All right, now cut all that out. <laughs> <laughs> and only put in the lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, yep, yep, yep. What else we got, Sergio? <laughs> All right, let's do that again. <laughs> uh, uh, do you have anything else? Uh, let me see if I got anything. <laughs> uh, this is another, like, one of those silly ideas to throw out there uh-huh. um so i was uh listening to something they were talking about um celebrities that are um uh like you know um you hear about like if a say uh, a team in your city wins the super bowl and all of a sudden out of the woodworks um like celebrities that you didn't even know were like from that city all of a sudden are like partying with the, with the, um, in the team in the locker room and all that. Uh-huh. Um, do you think there are any artists like that are, I don't know, would have enough like cool, like coolness points, <laughs> um, built up that like if they showed up to, to, a um, to a celebration like that, anybody would care. No. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking about that because I'm like, it is like, it's basically the only like art form where there's not like a celebrity like that. That's the best part in a way. (laughs) Yeah. In a way it is. But it's also like, yeah, like, um, like, you know, like E40 shows up like warrior games or whatever. (laughs) People are like, oh, there's E40 or whatever. Like, for instance, like, um, (laughs) The be- the biggest sports stars are basketball players, right? Probably, yeah. And the reason being is because, first of all, if you're the best per- person on your team, mm-hmm. it's very visible. Right. There's only like four other people on the yeah. court. And not only that, but then there's nothing blocking their face. Right. So you yeah. see them very clearly. Yeah. Um <clears throat> While there's other sports like football, for instance, where it's hard to get to know that many people's face, right? Because they're all wearing these big things on their heads, mm-hmm. blocking the visibility of seeing who they are, right? And and to me, that's a benefit of football. Mm-hmm. Be- 
maybe not for everyone, but in my opinion, they get to make their money and then walk down the street without being bothered by people. Yeah, on some level, sure, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, for sure on some level, but... (laughs) um, but th- at least there's uh, like I wouldn't be able to tell you a baseball player if I saw him on the street today. Sure, like that's yeah. actually playing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like um, maybe I'd go like that. That's a good looking man right there. <laughs> yeah, um, he but, looks like he works out. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, and there's something I think that is uh, like great about that, mm-hmm. where um, like obviously like celebrities and things like that, like they they get they don't get to live a normal life. Like mm-hmm. they probably a lot of their, their time is figuring out how to have enjoyment while they're secluded from the rest of the population, mm-hmm. which to me seems horrible. And that's probably why when you hear celebrities talk, they sound like fucking crazy people. Mm-hmm. It's because they don't get to have real conversations with people. Right. Because they're too fucking famous and people don't let them be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, in my opinion, that's one of the best things about the art the art world is that like the art can be as big as it can be Mm -hmm. and no one has to know who you are for you to be successful. Right. It is just its own thing. I mean, I've, I've been, um, on my TikTok. shout out, um, (laughs) the, the, I made this video about building frames and it was like, it was about the idea of dressing for the job that you want. Okay. But in my mind, it's, I obviously, I mean, I'm wearing Crocs right now. <laughs> Shout out to Juan. Um, but, um, uh, I'm wearing Crocs right now, but what I'm talking about is how you present the work like that represents itself. Sure. That's yeah. the star of the show. Not me. Mm-hmm. I'm just a name associated with the painting. Mm-hmm. And maybe some people think that's actually a bad idea. I mean, hmm. uh, some people, you know, they want, I mean, I can't stand hearing artists talk, um, in interviews about how genius they are. <laughs> Although, you know, don't self deprecate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Wait a uh, second. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I mean, um, but I know what you mean. Like, yeah, th- there's don't bullshit. <laughs> yeah, th- there's intent when creating work, and then there's people who, like, at least for me, where I'm like, that sounded like a bunch of bullshit connected to a shitty painting. Sure. Yeah. Um. Um. The fuck was I about to say? Um. But yeah. But the idea is, is that like dressing for the job that you want is this idea of like like having a frame around your painting and like Mm -hmm. even the simple idea of like wiring your painting. I I don't know how often I hear it, but like it's so common that when you bring a painting to a gallery and they're wired that they're like, Oh, I hate that when people don't wire their paintings. (laughs) Yeah. And you're like, fuck, how common is that shit? And it seems like it's super common. (laughs) Yeah. It Uh, does sound like it, huh? But it is that like idea of like, uh presenting like thinking of your art as it's it it's the thing that represents you Mm -hmm. and to present it in a certain way that shows or dress the idea of dress for the job you want of like present it in a way that kind of demands that it be taken serious Mm -hmm. um and then how do you do that and uh and uh, I mean, the whole point is just that you, that it's the art that represents it's the, at the end of the day, if the art is famous, I mean, we all know how Van Gogh looks in Picasso, but like, sure. I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, Van Gogh just painted himself all <laughs> right. the time. So there was no hiding behind that, but yeah, <laughs> but I mean, f- if you put all of the artists in a class photo, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have a bigger group of losers <laughs> than any other class photo. <laughs> and all I'm trying to explain is that artists are not that cool. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but the art is like, and let's be honest. Like, I mean, I'm sh- everyone, you know, says Picasso was an ego and all that shit, but without his art, I mean, he just seems like a loser. <laughs> um, and you know whatever um you know like salvador dolly 
definitely in the drama club. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. played the tuba probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, um, you put that next to like fucking um, the baseball team or actors, and you're like, that's why they're known for their face. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that there isn't like great looking artists out there. But for the most part, you know, Warhol, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Kind of a dork. Right. Um, yeah, so so why why would we want to be <laughs> recognized? Right, yeah. <laughs> I always thought that, yeah, being a, a, a art fame is the best kind of fame because, like, Nobody knows what Banksy looks like, so he's just sure. like, do whatever the hell he wants. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he could hang out at a coffee shop all day long and not right. be bothered. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> right. And then you hear, like, Michael Jackson having to, like, rent out a store to go shopping, and you're like, oh, right. fuck, yeah. that guy. <laughs> fuck, that sounds horrible. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, I don't think, I think everyone, no one really wants, no one really understands what. And like, people shouting at him all day. And you're blasting me, fool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I don't even know what the context is, but. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, God damn, I can't get past that. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, I don't think any, anyone understands what fame means. You know what I mean? Right. Like in, no. until you have it and then they probably are like, what the fuck? No one told me that this thing is what it is. Right. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. I think that ends up what happens is that famous people just end up hanging out with other famous people. You, I, here's what I'm guessing it feels like. Do you know when you're about to walk into like a grocery store and there's the guy outside with a fucking um, with a clipboard and he's trying to get your attention? Yeah. The whole world is that now. <laughs> oh man. You know how horrible it is That's when you awesome. see that guy yeah. and you're like, oh fuck, how do I dodge this person? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. The whole world is that now. Oh no. That's what fame is. That's a nightmare. <laughs> Who wants that? Yeah. You don't want to fucking connect eye contact with anyone because they're like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And you're like. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, what do you want? Picture, <laughs> sure. Right. Like, yeah, I could yeah. only imagine how horrific that is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So every time you guys get, experience that little clipboard interaction where they want you to sign a petition about whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. understand that feeling you have where you're like, oh, God damn it. Mm -hmm. That's fame, but all the time. Yeah. And then be happy that you're an artist. Yeah, everybody wants something from me. Yeah, huh. fucking hell. Seems horrible. Oh, well, why are we on time? <laughs> <laughs> we are at an hour 32. <laughs> oh, fuck, let's go. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything else? Or, uh, I had something. I just wrote first page of sketchbook, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wanted to talk about how weird the pressure is about the first page of sketchbook, but I mean, that's... Really? Oh, I, don't, I never... I don't think I've ever had that. Oh, really? Yeah. I definitely <laughs> have felt it. I mean, I always try to fight it now that I'm aware of it, but there's like this... I actually skip the first page every time. I don't draw on the first page of the sketchbook because uh, it's like a... I'm like too... I, it's too like precious to... to <laughs> It's bad luck. Yeah, it's almost like a fuck this first page. <laughs> oh, uh, funny. No, I never heard of that. But, um, yeah, look through every... I think... I'm except for I think my sketchbooks in high school. Every sketchbook I have, I think I skipped the first page. Mm. Um, Where does that come from? That like weird pressure that I don't want to fuck it up. It's like, yeah, it's that. I don't know. I'm sure it like pertains to a bunch of shit, but like when starting something new and being like, I hope this doesn't go bad. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then. It seems like the first page always ends up sucking. <laughs> so I try not to. So then the second page sucks. Well, it's probably the first page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
First page is like, get ready, guys. <laughs> I guess that's as superstitious as I get. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's like the, the 13th floor of a building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first page of your sketchbook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so Illuminati. <laughs> Uh, no, I never heard of that. I don't know. I, don't, I think that's the first time I've heard somebody about say the first that. page of a sketchbook. Yeah, that they don't like doing it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you listeners, tell them. <laughs> All right. Okay, Fine. you're gonna hear today. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> uh, they're gonna be like one star. I was in until Sergio <laughs> talked about how he never heard about the first page of sketchbooks. <laughs> yeah. Biggest mistake of your life. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. I'm sure there was more to that conversation I want to bring up, but I didn't write it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else? Would, what were you about to say? Um, about that? No, you had something else. Oh. I thought you did. Maybe I was wrong. No. Uh, I, I thought I did, but I didn't have anything on my right, sir. Oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> I have something mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Is it a so, uh, talk some shit? <laughs> So I wrote that uh, simpl simplicity is rewarded in the art world, especially the higher the price seems to be. This is proof that rich people are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> or is this proof that is this proof that rich people are dumb? Huh. Um, or, or watered down. Uh, uh, and then I wrote, but there's nothing actually wrong with simple. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I don't, yeah, simplicity on its own is probably a good thing for the most part, right? Or, uh, well, I think, <laughs> I think I was probably watching, maybe, I don't know if I wrote that down when I watched that documentary about like the art oh, sales. Sure. Uh -huh. And it's like, there's like a polka dot thing and they're all like, wow, uh -huh. it's amazing. <laughs> like, it's even better in real life. And you're like, how could that be good in a picture? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Or like, um, you know, like the whole like, I don't know, there's just like all these like weird simple paintings like i mean simple as in like a single color painting mm -hmm. you know or a stripe or something like that i remember i went to the moma mm -hmm. and there was like a whole floor where all the paintings were just three bars of color mm -hmm. and then you go to the next one and it was like the same exact thing except for just different colors mm -hmm. and they were all like i don't know they were all very like I don't know, beige color colors. Okay. Well, like beige and like, think of like the colors in camp, like classic camouflage. I felt like they were all like that. Mm. Um, okay. And uh, I don't know, maybe I connected a couple dots and I was like, hmm. and then I wrote this. <laughs> I was like, are rich people dumb? <laughs> They can be fooled uh, just like anybody. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant by simplest. Obviously, I f there's some great uh, um, paintings where they they don't go, they don't do too much, and there's something beautiful about that and great. Yeah, for sure. But I was more yeah. talking about like. Um, yeah, I guess that's where my went, my brain went to where like, oh, there's like really good simplistic design. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also just, yeah, like what you're saying, just. There's nothing, um, there's no awe inspired in that work. <laughs> yeah. I think I was thinking Pollock too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you know, <laughs> all these things where it's like paint trips. It's like this, there's like, that's the whole, at least in my opinion, that's the thing. Right. It's like paint trips and they're like genius. <laughs> <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> like, that didn't use a lot of brain power. Uh, genius and... Man's fucking genius. Paint drips. <laughs> yeah. How can I think of something that they might think is genius? And you just have to figure out the next two words. Do you know what I mean? What's the next two words that might blow them away? Or like... Um, you mean like the how to sum up my my new style? Is, yeah. Is, you know. Yeah. Fart powder. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like um, paint drips. Like pouring art. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, you know what's funny is what's the uh, next one? I don't want to say that on here. Might be talking a little too much shit. But <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and what was the other thing? The other thing recently I was thinking about with um, rich people and them buying art is that uh, you know I have that theory about um, rich people love shiny shit. Yeah. So just pour some resin on that bitch. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> So my newest thing has been how like um, it was based around, and I might have like hint, like stumbled upon this before on the podcast, but I was thinking about how like in Silicon Valley everyone wears these fucking vests, these like fleece vests, mm-hmm. yeah, windbreaker vests or whatever. Yeah, they all wear them, and it was like this weird like migration to this look mm-hmm. right and it was all i think because they didn't want to be seen as the businessman with the suit right so they were like well this is what we'll do we'll all just wear fucking <laughs> vests <laughs> yeah and um and yeah so they all wear vest and it's in my opinion they do this so that you look at them as if they're the common man sure right um and there, there is this weird, like, f- like trend about um, rich people looking like the common man. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like the homeless chic style mm-hmm. where people dress where you're like, I can't tell if you're a homeless or a millionaire. <laughs> sure. um, but you're definitely not in between. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it started making me think about, um, I started thinking about that. And then I was like, oh, well, it makes sense why, like. Like Banksy and like a lot of street art is like the auctioned off art nowadays, mm. and it's because, in my opinion, it's because it's like, oh, it's street art, like right, it's the people's art. Like, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like this like weird obsession of being like, we're the people, like mm-hmm. we're, you know what I mean? Like, um, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, um, so, and maybe that's why shiny things don't sell as good as they used to. Hmm. It's because they they were locked in the closet with the suits <laughs> and the um, yeah <laughs> and the uh, you know whatever um, they just uh, that was another idea I had. Yeah, these uh, days, like you look at the trend of corporate speak, it's mm-hmm. very much like all inclusive and you know like right. yeah trying to get everybody together from all walks of life yeah, like, <laughs> yeah then let us on on your yachts <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think that's probably where it comes from like oh this is art from the, the people right like, we are part of this now yeah but at the same time it's like do street artists wear fleece <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's all they wear <laughs> right fleece <Yeah>. onesies <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll never know because <laughs> who knows how Banksy looks, right? I heard this is this is uh, exclusive <laughs> and for your ears only. But I heard he's a monkey with a big brain. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Another waiting to dry exclusive. No, let's keep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, awesome. I think we. We stumbled to the end, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's always, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, this has been Waiting to Dry. <laughs> if you're still listening, fuck off. Yeah.